What's going on guys? All right, so about to head over to Troy's house and go get this uh, catch can installed. Let's get it. Welcome back to another video. Uh, currently on my way to my boy Troy's house, AKA Scatting 392. Um, we're about to install this oil catch can. <clears throat> so only thing that I can think that we're gonna have to do to it is there's a hose that's on it. Uh, that's a little bit long. So um, we might have to just trim that down a little bit. And uh, once we trim it down, get everything fitted right, it's gonna be a really easy installation and uh, I think it's gonna go pretty smoothly. So, like I said, on our way there now. So, let's get it. Uh, all right, there we go. Try to let her cool off a little bit before we get our hands all up in there. Yep. First thing we got to do, the oil catch can bolts in a factory hole. It's already drilled there, but usually this this wire is in there. They just have one of these Christmas tree pins that hold it in place. You just use a screwdriver or whatever you want to use and just pry that out of the way. Cool. Get it up out of the way. Have gloves on because this motor's hot if it's been driven. <laughs> they gonna burn the crest. Nice. Pipe right here off. This is what the catch can replaces. So on this end, you'll pull it off with the rubber insulator, which will be very tight. This end, the elbow is going to stay. So get that out of there. It's a tight fit. Just give it a turn, it'll pop out of there. So that part's going to stay, and then we got to get this part off too this rubber piece here. They're both on there pretty good. But if you can get a grip on it and turn it, that'll help. Just keep turning it and it'll come off of there. There we go. See it already? Oh, in there and it's inside this rubber tube and inside the normal tube. It's amazing how much oil it sucks back through there, but I didn't even realize that, like how yeah. much oil it really does. Yeah, I mean that's what this system's designed to do. This, uh, that's your PCV valve, and your intake. As air comes in your intake, it creates vacuum and opens this valve, mm -hmm. releases uh, the pressure inside the crankcase, and so that pressure, that all that pressure and all that stuff in there has uh, oil residue in it. And it just sucks back in here and under normal circumstances it just gets reburned but it will gum up your intake over time and your imagine like fuel injectors stuff like that over time it'll just get gummed up so the oil catch can basically runs that that vapor through a chamber inside the chamber it's got um, stainless steel matting inside mm -hmm. And so that it runs through that stainless steel and leaches the oil out of the air and drops it into the into the bottom of the catch can so that it doesn't recirculate back through your intake. And that's how the catch can works. Yep. <laughs> exact side here is a valve, and that valve has a little spring and a weight at the bottom. And when this thing creates that uh, that vacuum from the air going through there it lifts that weight up so that that pressure inside the crankcase gets pulled through here and back through. And then, so the more air rushing through, the more uh, pressure is built up in the motor, the bigger that valve opens, so more air recirculates. But a lot of people just don't understand what the catch can actually does. They know it catches oil, but they don't right. understand why you really need it. And that's why it's just something they really should have on the, from the factory, but mm -hmm. They don't. Here we'll take, this should be like an eight millimeter screw. It usually comes with your catch can, but what you're gonna do is 
put it in here and it goes right in that factory hole that's already pre-threaded and drilled. So we'll just hand tighten it down there. Make sure you got gloves because this motor is hot. Otherwise, wait until it cools off or you will burn <laughs> the crap out of yourself. But you just run it down in there. The other thing to remember is because this is bolted directly to the block and this is all aluminum, this is gonna transfer heat. So if you ever go to check it, make sure it's cooled off or you will get burned. The other important thing to do is, because this is gonna expand and subtract and when it gets hot, the bottom part of that can get real tight. If you have some um, anti-seize, just put a little anti-seize on the thread and that'll keep it from next time you have to take it off to empty it, it won't be so hard to get on and off from the, from the heating and cooling expansion. You just need an eight millimeter socket and a ratchet. down actually I'm sorry it's a 12 millimeter socket that you need not an 8 millimeter it's an 8 millimeter bolt and we'll just make sure that bracket's straight up and down position like we want it snug it up tight it's easier if you have a deep well and a, a swivel head socket so you can swivel it out the way and not worry about hitting any of your top pieces. It doesn't have to be super tight, just enough to keep it from moving. There you go. Let's see which one of these are longer. Yeah, so here, some of them are just uh, regular clamp. Some kits come with, with hidden clamps with a nice cover. Just depends on who you buy it from. Um, this particular kit came with the the covers and the clamp style. Mm -hmm. A lot of times this is the biggest pain. If you have to take the clamp off to move it, how it gets all frayed up and stuff, yeah. it's difficult to get the clamp back on. So what I usually do is take a little bit of, take a piece of duct tape. And I'll just take and uh, tear a little piece off. Get a good tight tape on it. up in there just like that then make sure your clamps good and loose and that way you push it up on in there then you're good to go okay a lot of times these kits come with with long so they'll fit multiple different engines like five seven or the six four so some of them you'll have to cut, like we're gonna have to cut that one there because we just need a short piece to go from here to here. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll, I'll show you, but we'll take that tape and we'll tape a section and then we'll cut right in the middle of the tape and that'll prevent fray. the fray from happening. Cool. Get the fitting on a lot easier. So the first one we gotta do is just get this one on here and that'll go from the intake manifold from the PCB port. little piece of rubber right there is catching so I have some aluminum shears because this has a uh, you can see this has like some some stainless steel inside to help mm -hmm. keep it straight so you can't just cut it with regular cutting pliers or anything I, I just have these uh, aluminum shears that I usually use to cut work with us very easily. Get my gloves on to help get some connectors around where the clip is at the bottom where it's not, you know, really visible. So it just gives it a cleaner look. So that goes on there. Let me loosen that clamp up. Like 
I said, I try to hide my clamp yeah. uh, around the bottom, just out of the way so it's a little cleaner look when you're like car shows and things like that. That is pretty good. Doing a pain. Yep. Now all we gotta do is turn this rubber T piece around. These, once they get on the plastic, they get very difficult to move. So what we got to do is rotate it around because what we're going to do. brass fitting that you'll need. What it'll do is that'll push up in here like this and then you don't have to worry about clamping that one because this is the suction side so the air rushing through here creates the vacuum so it's pull like this so it's not like this has got pressure behind it pushing it out so you really don't need a, a clamp on this and it's good and tight anyway. You can see you can barely move that once it gets locked in. So now all we got to do is get our uh, our piece of pipe we have here and just cut it down, measure and cut it down, and then we'd be good to go. I see someone doing actual a thicker piece of tape. A thicker piece of tape to make sure that I get a good cut. Gotcha. Here you just wrap it around one good time. Tear it. Measure it to the other end. Hold on one sec. Then you want the tape in the middle of where you got to cut because you want to cut in the middle of the tape so it doesn't fray. So measure the other end. Just having connected, it's already transferred enough heat to burn the crap out of your hand. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's wild. Yep. It's just like, you know, they put like aluminum heat sinks on stuff and that's what allows the, the heat to transfer. And yeah. It comes off of there. Well, this is doing the same thing. It's just transferring heat right off of that block. <laughs> just make sure that's straight. Yep. Straight. What's up, bud? What's up? <laughs> yeah, he did psychos in a good gap. He went to something there. Is he? The round one just prevents it from collapsing when you cut it, but you can see I cut it and it's not really, I mean, no, it's, it's it bounces right back to where it needs to be, so. Not that big a deal. <laughs> and I just wanna make sure that I double check my cut. I wanna bring this out just a little bit more. So I want this to have a little bit of curve. I don't want it laying over the top of the bracket. I just think it looks better if you gotta, yeah. you know, you kind of have the same curve. I don't yeah. know, that's just me being wacky, but I just like stuff to look right. I'm actually gonna have to move my tape cut. You can see if I cut it right at the end, yeah. which technically I could cut it right at the end, the tape's gonna prevent it from fraying, but I usually try to cut dead in the middle of the tape, mm -hmm. so. But this will give it basically the same Curve. Kind of curve look? Yeah. Gotcha. Just like at the match. So. You can run it back down in there. That'll reshape it back around like I want it. Tape. And the tape 
place on close to the fray. Tear the rest away so that it's, this tape is hidden underneath. It's a great thing about duct tape, or a, hmm. I use like Gorilla Tape, you can tear That's easy. Yeah, and our fitting to go back on. It shouldn't be too bad, that's why I tape this. Just tuck it down in there. Rotate it a little bit. There we go. Awesome. Do that with the same. You just gotta have patience, which <laughs> sometimes I don't have any, but so we got got our fitting where we want it. So this part is fairly straightforward. You just run it on this one. Run it on that one. This, this is a homage Make sure we got the curve we want. Grab this rubber piece with my glove. Because it's still, I still need to twist it a little bit further. The glove, give me a little better grip. There we go. There we go. So, right now we gotta do tighten up our hose clamps on these two. I'm going to twist these around so the hose clamp is more at the bottom. And of course it's going to be difficult. I should have spun it around where I could get to it from the back side. Flexible and good. And now, what we gotta do is take the bottom part and just screws right up on the bottom here. store or something yeah. and we'll take this off and put some anti-seize on it just to make sure tight make sure that's straight it doesn't look straight looks good I'm I'm it. bring it back just a little bit because it doesn't look exactly straight to me catch can install sir Just uh, crank it up, make sure we don't hear any leaks or anything like that, which we should. I mean, it's just, like I said, it's just some minor amount of vacuum that rolls through there. Awesome. Good to go. Yep, good to go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Um, there is the catch can install video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Hope it was very informative. Uh, for all of you who have not installed or have a uh, catch can, um, I hope this video helped you out. If you were looking for a video to install a catch can, um, like I've said like four times already, it's not really that hard, but. Uh, when you have somebody like Troy that's willing to help you and willing to do the process for you so you can record and so you can get a good video, uh, it's really appreciated uh, once again. Uh, so I just want to thank him. Uh, if you guys can, go follow him on Instagram, scatton392. I'm going to put it like right down here. Go follow him on Instagram. Uh, once again, thank you guys for watching. If you're new here, uh, this is one of your first videos of mine that you're watching, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, let's get to a 1,000 before my year mark um, we're at 700 right now and I think I got like two months left until uh, it's my year mark it's crazy I don't feel like I've been doing this that long um, I mean it's not really that long but I feel like it's been 
like a couple months. Uh, so once again, thank you all so much and I'll see you guys later.